Today we're going to be taking a look at electromechanical uh, design processes and tools with inside of Solid Edge that help us with that design process. When you're dealing with large assemblies or any type of assemblies, you have the ability to configure them uh, so that you can just hone in on the parts that you want. We also want to take a look at the sheet metal processes. We'll be looking at other processes throughout this demonstration, but we want to also look at the top-down uh, process in dealing with sheet metal uh, with solid, inside of Solid Edge. And so we're just going to tell Solid Edge where we would like to start and <clears throat> and how we want to uh, to include this information. Well, when we include information, we want to make sure that we have true fit and function of our our parts. So we can just go and grab the information from the parts surrounding uh, this particular part that we're designing, and we can just choose and use the trim tools inside of inside of Solid Edge to help. Uh, me with our process and you with your process and here we're just dealing with a sheet metal part we have a certain thickness uh, we can go and take a look at the material of this particular one and we can design what type of material we want maybe we want this one to be aluminum and what type of gauge uh, do we want to place inside of here and we're just going to make this one 20 gauge of course you can make your own material and your own gauges uh, but these are the ones that are uh, included inside of Solid Edge. Next, to make sure and to include that we have true fit and function within our assembly, we're just going to go through and grab uh, the information from other parts surrounding because we want to be able to make sure that we have the proper uh, hole cutouts uh, for, for our sheet metal part. And it's just simply just going around the part and you can see the, the visual feedback that Solid Edge is providing to know what it is that you're actually uh, selecting. So whenever I select this top part, you can see that we're projecting that information down uh, to our part. And let's take a look at the top. And what I want to do is I want to simply just select this information because this is the information that I want to cut away. I want to get rid of or remove from my sheet metal part. Simply just grab and go and push that information down. And whenever we do that, anytime during the design process, you can turn your surrounding parts uh, off so you can actually see what it is <clears throat> that you're designing. Just hone in on that or what is around there. Next, let's take a look at how we can start pulling off uh, some information. Here is a flange. You have many options that you can choose from, but you always have the ability to accurately and precisely place um, dimensions on to your parts. We can use 3D annotation uh, or what we like to call PMI dimensions inside of here and you can see how easy it is with synchronous technology for users to place tabs very quickly on their on their parts. One of the things that we'd like to utilize is uh, the ability to slice the graphics and so in other words I want to be able to slice through here because I just need to look at certain aspects of this design but I want to cut some of that off so I can just see exactly what I'm I'm looking at and you can always turn that back on we can see that we may have some interferences in here so with synchronous technology we simply just go and grab our tools and you can see that I want to hone in on uh, a particular key point I'm gonna uh, hone in on this center point right here and you can see that now we have placed that right up against that uh, part so I can make sure that I have true uh, fit and function inside of there. Next I want to be able to uh, break a few corners so we'll just select that and 10 millimeters is fine and also I want to make sure that that is centered uh, with this other part so we can simply just select that and we can see that it is exactly centered with our steering wheel. Next, I want to make sure uh, that we have um, clearance through here. So I just want to include that circle and simply grab and push this through. And now we have our cutout. And it's very easy how you can see utilizing top-down design inside of uh, Solid Edge and how you can make sure that you have true fit and function. Next, we want to be able to uh, include some more information, but we want to go beyond uh, just including. Let's take a look at some of the options we have. We have the option to offset uh, inside of here. So I just want to be able to offset this to a particular distance, and we can type in that distance. 
And then what I want to do is I want to be able to engrave a part number on here. So we have a text option uh, with, with Solid Edge. And I just want to give this um, maybe our part number. And whenever I select this, I want to make sure that uh, we have an alignment. And as I select here, you can notice that I can put it on either side of the circle. We'll just put it on the top side of the circle. And then use our etching tool inside of Solid Edge to be able to etch this particular uh, part and you can see that you do have options whenever you export this out as a DXF uh, you have your options uh, applied there of how you want this to actually look and you can see how quickly and easy it is to uh, to etch something inside of your part next we need to go through and we need to bring back our our assembly because we're utilizing our top-down design and I just want to go around this part and grab uh, some edges you can see that I don't have to rotate. Solid Edge helps me understand what is behind and what it is that I'm trying to select. And on this particular one, I just want to grab this particular key point. I don't, I don't know what the distance is, but I do know I want to go to that key point in there and so I can accurately uh, place that there. But let's uh, add some precision to our part. And I want to precisely uh, put a dimension inside of here and then I can use my scroll wheel to either uh, select that or I know the actual distance that I want and it's 20 millimeters and you can see by using synchronous technology and live rules it understood that this was symmetric and so it created that and changed it on the fly for me I didn't have to add another operation or secondary operation to place it in there next we want to pull off some more flanges and again I just want to use some key points to place these in here and maybe uh, had a change uh, someone comes over and says hey we need to change that to maybe 15 I can again easily come in and change that but notice what it did to the other flanges those flanges also moved at the same time again that's live rules that's synchronous technology working for you so you don't have to uh, worry about making a lot of changes synchronous technology is going to do that uh, for you now in doing this and as you're going through your design process you see that you have uh, some more uh, items that you may need to go in and cut out. There we go. And now we just need to, just like what we did before, we can easily get to a, a particular view that we want to look at. And you can see that we may uh, have selected some extra information that's quickly go through and we can deselect that, that information. So as you can see, top-down design uh, inside of Solid Edge is very quick and easy, and making sure that your parts uh, fit and function uh, correctly. Now let's go f uh, finish off uh, this part with a few more items. One is that you can see uh, we need to close up uh, these corners, so we're going to use our close corner command, and we have uh, multiple options when doing this. So you can see we have open, close, you have a circular cutout, you can have a U-shaped uh, in the corner or a V-shaped, even a square or even a miter. In this particular case we're going to be utilizing uh, the miter option for our four corners. So we can just come up here and select, just go around, walk around the model, select uh, the ones that we want and you have the ability uh, with uh, every option you have the ability to change uh, the gaps or any other type of uh, functions inside of here and all that information is displayed there on the screen right at your cursor and as you notice as I've gone through uh, this this little demonstration that we've we've changed or we've made all of our commands right at my uh, cursor and that's the, the one thing that's very nice about Solid Edge is the interface helps the user and gives them the minimum uh, mouse travel uh, that they need uh, when, when creating or changing their commands. Now the next thing that we want to be able to do is uh, we're going to have a, a cover go over this and it's going to have some screws and so we're going to need to create some holes for some PIM fasteners uh, inside of here. And so we're gonna uh, we can take a look at the options that we have uh, for you can see all the different type of holes, but we also have the ability to save uh, commonly used holes, and we can save them in a text file, and that will be in that pull down uh, that you see me using. Next, we can we can go through and we can simply 
uh, select an edge of where we want to dimension from just by quickly going up and selecting E on that keyboard and then we can precisely uh, put in this information of where we want this to be placed and it simply places that hole now the information since we have saved it that information is, is always there and is always and you can see that this was a through all hole and that information was saved now the next thing that we want to uh, be able to do is uh, to be able to mirror this particular uh, command. In this one, I'm just going to go up and select mirror. And I'm going to select uh, how I want to mirror this thing about. And you can see that Quick Pick is helping me uh, understand what it is that I need or what uh, Solid Edge needs me uh, to place inside of here and quickly mirror that over so now I have four of uh, those holes. Now we've completed this part. There's a lot more to Solid Edge uh, sheet metal, but we're not going to cover that today. Uh, but we just want to show you how we can quickly create our sheet metal part, put it out onto a, uh, a draft sheet. But first, before we put it out on a draft sheet, let's go ahead and let's flatten uh, this particular part. I'm going to turn off my assembly. And you can see we don't need to slice our graphics anymore, so we can turn that off at, at, at any time. Uh, one thing we want to point out to you is the uh, options. One is Solid Edge will be able to give the user uh, what's called a sensor or an alarm. You can see that we have an exclamation point over here, and that's telling us that we are out of our range for our blank size. So whenever you have a blank out onto the shop floor or something you can set uh, what that blank size uh, is to be or what it is or what it can be and Solid Edge will tell you as you're designing if you're going to go outside of those parameters and we're okay on on this one and we can also come in here and we can see some uh, outside corner treatments you see that I didn't break too many corners that's because a lot of my corners I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to let our flat option uh, command do that for me, and it went around uh, all of our corners and and broke them to be uh, the size that I wanted it uh, to be. So next, we want to be able to start putting some manufacturing dimensions on here, and we can do that through our what we call our PMI. Uh, product manufacturing information and I'm just going to show you the different tools that we have with our dimensions one we had the smart dimension which you saw there uh, earlier with the 7493 and I'm just going to go through and you can see that as I'm selecting this I am uh, adding a chain uh, <clears throat> I told Solid Edge I wanted to start with a chain and it may it remembered that but I can also come over here and I can tell it that I want to uh, maybe put a stacked option and so whenever I place this in here you can see that I select a stack and it always maintains that stack 